Hi everyone, uh, my name is Feng Yuchen. Uh, I'm a fourth year PhD student in public marketing from Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, and first I want to thank for the organizers for holding such a great workshop. Uh, and today I will present a joint project uh, with my advisor Tai Shen and Dennis Zhao and also our industry collaborators. Uh, in this paper, we study the effects of content diversity in algorithmic recommendations on users' digital uh, content consumption through a field experiment. Uh, actually, we just got the revision a few days ago and are in the process of revising the paper. So any comments or suggestions are highly appreciated. Okay, let's get started. So I don't think I need to spend too much time to motivate how social media are popular nowadays. But according to a survey in 2022, Around 60% of the people in the world use social media and spend on average two and a half hours every day on this media. And one more important thing is that almost all of these large social media platforms use their personalized recommender systems to recommend users content based on users' individual historical information. For example, the TikTok uh, For example, this TikTok used the uh, uh, for you tab to recommend videos, and Instagram recommend you the suggested posts, and also the Facebook recommend news for you. And one big concern about this personalized recommender system is that they could track users into the filter bubbles, uh, which is a concept first raised by Teresa in 2011. So the bubble means that the platforms will recommend users only the content that conform to their existing beliefs or interests. We know that that can lead to a lot of negative consequences, uh, such as consumption polarization or opinion bias. Uh, uh, but because of this concern, the regulators have been urging the social media platforms to recommend more diversified content uh, on, the, on their platforms. Uh, one big example in the US is that uh, in 2021, the Senate has proposed a trans filter bubble transparency act to regulate the recommendations of social media platforms so that users can see more diversified content and consume more diversity. However, for the social media platforms, they tend to object to this idea, typically citing the diversity consumption trade-off. So here is the logic. Suppose a personalized recommender system increases its recommendation diversity, then it could sacrifice the recommendation accuracy. Therefore, consumers who consume less and engage less and hurting the social media platform's profit. And just because of that, the social media platforms are reluctant to increase their recommendation diversity. And motivated by this uh, debate, we ask three research questions in this paper. First, if they modify a personalized recommend algorithm to recommend more diversified content, then will users consume more diversely as the regulators hope to achieve? And at the same time, will the users reduce their consumption or engagement levels just as the social media platforms are concerned about? And if that diversity consumption trade-off does exist, will users respond all the same? Or can we find some sub-segment of the users who can respond positively to a more diversified algorithm? And also what's the rationale behind that? What kind of suggestions we can provide for the social media platforms if they want to improve their recommendation diversity without hurting the important performance metrics, such as users' consumption or engagement levels. 
And to quickly connect our research to the previous literature, uh, many researchers, also including our, uh, our audience, such as David, uh, have studied the effects of algorithmic recommendations on users' median consumption diversity and levels. And specifically in our paper, we directly change the diversity level of a personalized recommend, recommend algorithm and study how that will impact users' consumption behaviors. And to do that, we run a large-scale randomized field experiment to increase uh, the topic diversity of the recommended videos on this on a social media platform through its personalized recommended system. And uh, to give you a quick preview of the main result, we find that overall, for a more diversified recommender system, we didn't find clear evidence that showing that users consume more diversely. However, we do find that users lower their consumption levels. That doesn't sound like a good news, right? Is that consumers were not persuaded to consume more diversely? At the same time, they also consume less, just as the social media platforms are concerned about. But that's, however, that's not the end of the story. We find that actually different users respond very differently. For inactive users, meaning those users who did not view any videos one month before the experiment, uh, they did not change their consumption diversity level but uh, only decrease the consumption level facing higher recommendation diversity. And the more interesting group is for these active users, meaning the users who have watched some videos one month before the experiment. For these users, a more diversified recommender al sorry, algorithm significantly increased their consumption diversity and without hurting their consumption or engagement levels. Then we further explore the possible mechanism to explain why these active users can respond positively. And we find that it could be due to, first, these users value the platform's content more. And second, the algorithm can more accurately predict these active users' preferences. Oh, go ahead. If you increase consumption diversity to a point, it's no longer personalized, right? So um, are you still finding that you can increase diversity and still be personalized? If it's, if it's so diverse, then it's, it's not about the consumer's actual preferences. Uh, uh, Note that here is that uh, our, uh, still, even if we increase the consumption diversity to a relatively large level, still a personalized and recommended system. So we can say that uh, that's well, uh, that consumption are uh, still related to the personalized preferences. But by, by definition, diversity means it's probably will get outside the scope of what exactly that person likes mm -hmm. in um, order to be diverse. So it, it seems like they're, they cannot coexist. High diversity and personal. Uh, I can explain some uh, is there details in this mechanism. Is that I think for the social bubble of the diversity dimension, not only about the opinions I don't agree with, but also it could be some ideas or new inspirations I never been able to know, but maybe I also like. And in that case, it's a novelty. Uh, more like the novelty or something new or something. Uh, is uh, more creative, people have no never known before. Clarification on two A, I would think inactive users means uh, zero consumption, but it hurts their consumption. Oh, I mean that for inactive users, let me clarify, it's like they don't consume before the experiment. And here is the result about uh, how they consume during the experiment. It hurts it relative to what? Uh, relative to control users, so we want them to the experiment. Yeah, I'll explain it in the experiment part. Thank you for this clarification. Uh, and uh, okay, go ahead. Maybe so. Uh, it kind of depends on what the what the initial algorithm does, right? If this thing is really optimal for some duration, you can't improve it. But here you're saying the algorithm is more accurate than the preferences, but it disappears. 
as implied in the initial algorithm is not optimal, right? Mm -hmm. It depends on how we define an optimal algorithm. So usually for a, for, in, for a company like this in this industry, industry, they mainly focus on the demand or consumption levels. They didn't put that diversity consideration into their algorithm, into their optimality consideration. But here we want to say that uh, if they uh, can see, also consider this diversity part, they can still like uh, uh, kind of achieve a greater optimal, a uh, uh, greater improvement without hurting that K performance matrix, but also increase the strength of the chip matrix. Have you measured values in the lab? Uh, question, uh, I, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but a quick question that currently we use a very high level measure. It's like a, a how a, um, the number of clicks users have uh, had one month before the experiment. Uh, we believe that if they click, uh, click more, then the algorithm will understand them better. Uh, now let us go into the uh, field experiment. Uh, first, we uh, collaborated with NetEase Cloud Music, uh, which is the world's third largest music streaming service company uh, after Spotify and Tencent. And it has around 800 million users and 180 million monthly active users. And most people access this first service through its mobile app. And in that mobile app, there is a main feature called Cloud Village. And in this Cloud Village, users actually do not listen to music. Uh, they watch some short and music related videos, uh, just uh, very similar to what you can watch on TikTok or YouTube shorts. And all the videos are recommended by a personalized uh, recommendation system. Uh, let me give you a more vivid view about this cloud village because our experiment was conducted in this cloud village. Suppose if the user uh, go into this uh, music app and they can see that uh, for the bottom part of this page, uh, there are different functions such as home, my follows, my podcast, and also the cloud village, which is the main focus of our paper. And if users want to watch some, uh, uh, oh, sorry, if they uh, click into this uh, cloud village, uh, they will see a double waterfall of vi short videos recommended by the personalized algorithm. And if users want to watch one of the videos, they can click on it and the videos will play automatically. And users can also engage with this, uh, with the video during the watch such as like, comment on, share, or save the video. And if they want to see more videos, they can just switch back and then swipe up screen, then more recommendations will arrive. And in this cloud village, the, there are a lot of videos that are with very diverse topics. Uh, the company categorizes the videos into around 80 topics, uh, such as a music video, music basics, a uh, film mashup, a uh, personal story sharing, uh, and the daily blog. We can see that there are a lot of topics on this platform. And in our paper, we mainly consider the content diversity in terms of the topic diversity of the videos. And now you may want to know that how these videos will be recommended through its personalized recommender system and also how the algorithm will control the topic diversity levels of videos. So now let me take a few minutes to walk you through that. And I will emphasize that diversity control is the last stage of the recommendation. And I would say that uh, this procedure is kind of standard in industry. Uh, many other platforms such as TikTok and Play also use a similar procedure. And usually for such a video platform, uh, they will have a video pool including all recommendable videos, which is about 1 million to 100 million videos. And they will pass these videos into the first stage called retrieval. And the main goal of this retrieval stage is the algorithm will use different strategies to quickly pre-select 
500 to 10,000 videos from that big tool and then use them as a candidate for recommendations. And for the interest of time, I'll skip that what kind of strategies we use. Uh, but if you are interested in that, uh, I'm very to, happy to discuss more in the discussion of part of our class. And after they retrieve all these videos, uh, they will use uh, an algorithm to rank these videos. Specifically, they will train the deep neural nets to predict the match value for each video for the focal user and run these videos by the predicted X score from the highest to the lowest, and then select only the top 100 to 300 videos uh, for the final uh, consideration as recommendations. And after, and after this ranking stage, uh, we will enter the last stage, the main focus in our paper, which is a re-ranking stage. In this stage, the platform can do other things about this uh, 300 ish videos. They can choose to add advertisements and also can control the diversity level of the video topics. And uh, after doing this re ranking, they will choose around 10 to 20 videos and to finally recommend them for user for user's query, meaning for user's swap. And let me give you a simplified example to explain how this algorithm will control that topic diversity. They suppose now the algorithm needs to choose only three videos for this focal user eye, uh, just as shown the, on this uh, larger paper uh, with these recommendation conditions. And for the first uh, recommendation, the algorithm will always choose a video with the best match, meaning the one with the highest uh, match value and score. Therefore, the first video called with the topic music basics will be selected for the first recommendation. And then for the remaining recommendation positions, the algorithm will diversify the topics through a parameter called the window size. And uh, let me explain how this window size works. Suppose the window size equals two, then the algorithm for the, for the second recommendation position, the algorithm will consider among the remaining top two videos for the second recommendation position and try to find the one which has a different topic from the first recommendation. However, this time we can say that all the first three videos are about topic of music basics. So the algorithm does not have a rule to increase the topic diversity. Therefore, they have to only they have to choose the video with a higher uh, match value, which is a video two as a second recommendation. And then the algorithm will use this moving window to select among the remaining top two ranked videos for the third recommendation position. Uh, this time we can find that a new topic called personal story comes up. And therefore the algorithm will select this video four as the third recommendation position. Although the video four has a lower M score than video three, but the first priority here is to diversify videos. So this video four is selected. And in total, three videos are recommended with two unique topics. And we can imagine that as this window size increases, then the consideration set for one recommendation position will be enlarged. Therefore, it's more likely for, an al for the algorithm to select one video which has a more diversified topics than the previous recommendations. Therefore, the topic diversity of recommendations will be higher. Let me also explain that through an example. Uh, suppose now we increase the window size from two to three, and the first recommendation is still that best match. But this time, for the second recommendation position, the algorithm will select among the remaining top three ranked videos for the second recommendation position, 
And this time we can find that there is a new topic called personal story. So this video four will be selected as a second, second recommendation. And then the algorithm will still use that moving window to select among the remaining three, the top three videos for the third position, recommendation position. And this video five with the topic called music video has a different topic from both recommendation one and recommendation two. Therefore, this topic, uh, video five, will be selected as a third recommendation. And in total, three videos are recommended with three different topics. Therefore, the higher, the larger window size, the more diversified of the videos will be recommended. So, any questions about this part? So you said that they check that thing that you see the sum of all the M's here. The uh the sum of M is lower, right? Compared to the case that's uh the smaller the smaller size. So this go back to our question before. Uh what you said is the uh the graph that high definition. So you increase the graph definition, you definitely decrease the circle Uh yes, I agree with that. It's like a well sacrifice a bit of your uh, recommendation afterwards. But that doesn't mean that the consumers will always respond negatively. It's like this is a result from the algorithm. But how they respond uh, will depend on the results they find later. Yes? Is MIT training based on like the volume control? It's trained on that the probability that this one person will click on the radio, like this video, how long people watch that, and do a little combination of all these metrics. So, by teaching high volume training, how could you say that again? By teaching the high or the average in my kind of like interesting topic. And now, in our, uh, for our experiment, we just directly manipulate that window size uh, and then increase of treatment to users' recommendation diversity. Specifically for the control users, uh, they were recommended by the original algorithm. The window size is five if users have clicks in the past 30 minutes. Otherwise, the window size is 15. And uh, we randomly select 3% of users into the treatment group and increase all users' window size to 30. And in this case, treatment users will fit a larger window size and, and we expect they will be recommended more diversified uh, videos. And we run this experiment for 14 weeks from December 2021 to March 29. Uh, and we randomly sampled 10 million users visiting this cloud village during the experiment for our analysis. And we also collect users' demographic information and their weekly activities, including whether they visit cloud village, uh, whether they click on the video and how much, uh, just a second, and how much time they watch on this video, uh, and also whether they like, comment, and share these videos. And we conduct all our analysis in a weekly level and use these measures to indicate users' consumption and engagement levels. Yes. So that's a crucial question. Um, why you are using this window size? Because the window control the window size to make a difference. That that is also it depends on the, the person the person measuring, right? Yes. Um why is not something similar like you still rank from high to low but so whenever you're deciding the correct mix, you look at what 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 else is new and this new probability that you have. Oh okay. Uh I I here I need to agree that there are many different ways to do that diversification, just as you said, can use it, can do it in the ranking stage. 
uh, but we believe that window size one is the easiest one and the cleanest one to do that. Uh, first one is like a, uh, is like a, this, this will need very less uh, uh, computational resources, all the, uh, all the operations for the companies and very easy to implement. And second, uh, by using this window size, uh, we can derive, we can make sure that uh, we can get more diversified content. But if you use that in the ranking stage, adding some more objectives, then it's many things will be changed, such as the embedding training or other things. So it's not that clear uh, whether uh, the results are from uh, exactly the diversifying. And uh, since our main fo focus on this paper is about the topic of videos, uh, uh, about the to topic diversity. So we also track the topic of all videos recommended to each user and construct our topic diversity measure. And following the literature, we consider three indices. The first one is the number of video topics. Uh, this one is quite intuitive, right? But it has uh, some drawback. Uh, let's consider such an example. And the first person uh, watched the uh, nine videos from topic A and one video from topic B. And for the second person, it, he watched the uh, uh, five of each. Then intuitively, we will believe the second person consume more diversely since they are more ba since they are more balanced across different video topics. And however, the number of unique topics will be the same, which is two for these two cases. Therefore, in order to take care of this problem, uh, we also introduce a marrow of HHI and channel entropy of video topics. So that to make sure that we consider not only the richness of topics, but also the balance of videos among different topics. And here I want to emphasize that as number of video topics increases, HHI decreases, and entropy increases, the topic diversity will increase. And after we build all the mirrors, uh, we first uh, run a randomization check from the users are uh, balanced in their demographics uh, and also their pre-expanded behaviors. And our manipulation check, sorry, check showed that uh, you, treatment users for each week indeed uh, were recommended more diversified topics. And among all the three topic diversity measures I just mentioned. <laughs> and after we run this manipulation check, we want to say that how users will respond, respond to this such a more diversified recommender system. Here's the result. For, the, for an average user, uh, if we look at the right panel about the consumption diversity, we would say uh, the blue bar refers to the treatment uh, and, uh, and the uh, orange bar refers to the control group. We would say that uh, for this uh, treatment users, uh, they significantly increase the number of click topics com compared to the control users, uh, it's about 3%. However, for the HHI, the change is insignificant. And for the entropy, the change is only marginal significant. As I just mentioned before, we think HHI and entropy better describe the topic diversity. So we conclude that we didn't find a clear evidence that suggesting that users were encouraged to consume more diversity. However, at the same time, users indeed reduce their consumption level. Here, I want to emphasize a variable called clicking frequency. It is defined as that uh, in one week, the number of days users have more than one week. Uh, in, in a way that divided by seven, which is the total number of days, meaning the share of days people have clicks. The reason why we want to emphasize this metric is that firms really care about that, since they are closely related to the daily active user number, uh, the firms, which is the key performance metrics of the firms. And we found that 
actually for the treatment users, their clinical frequency is significantly 3% lower than the control group, meaning that you, average users reduce their consumption level. And facing this session not that desired uh, result, we further look into that how users could respond differently. Do you have a question? Yeah, I wonder have you also looked into the outcome of the patient? For example, the sample is a benefit in certain conditions, but then you could show more example or whatever type of like better training data, learn better. So long term life is the next beneficial to the health. I totally agree with you. So, but uh, in our case, since so the the, the experiment is only about fourteen days, it's hard. It's a bit hard for us to in uh, interpret as a long term effects. Uh, but but here we want to what we want to emphasize is that firms really are care about their short term profit. So, if this is such a big decrease, then they will be very reluctant to increase the recommendation diversity. But suppose by the relative to a point in the long term, the reason the intuition, the intuition why firms want to do this diversity is just exactly as what you said. So it's for users to be interested in the future. But also the fact that we couldn't observe an improvement in quality, I guess we do have the clinical participation. So the exploration has been just too small for the difference in the data. So suppose the long term potential can be the potential in drug data. That would, that would be possible, uh, but we don't want for the reason why we only choose three percent of the research is that we don't want this percent too large. Or else, if the algorithm will then, then it will have a few over effect to the control group. Then our analysis will can be uh, a little bit inaccurate and biased. Can you help me interpret this magnitude in the first in the first row? So this is number of days. So it's, it's number of days in a week. Yes. Which sir. people get to at least one week on the on the dose. But they're they are very low. This is in shares, I assume. So it's a zero point two percentage. Yes. So it's because more people get started on anything. Uh, okay. the reason is that we consider uh, all people who uh ever who visit at least once during fourteen days. So that means that we will include a lot of inactive users who don't visit. Therefore, that's the number is so low here. But for the active users, it will increase more than two times. Yeah, so I think they've been splitting this by total by intense of expensive margins, because like this, the, the, the treatment effect is mainly around, uh, you still see the top best video in the dish one. And so if you go ever and click there, you'll see some of those always. And then I would just, my first impression would be like there'll be less clicks on the extensive part, so people will go and click more and more down the down videos. So I don't know how to interpret it. Just there is fewer people who just arrive, people arrive and don't do anything, and that's why effects are lower. Or people learn in this week that our recommendations are not as good and they don't come back. I just splitted it by repeating extensive intensive. My shop doesn't understand. Yes, that's a good question. We will definitely do that. Thank you for the suggestion. I think in that case, that's not much clear. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, do you work with clicks on just on the ad? Uh, actually, in this, in, in this experiment period, uh, users, do, uh, the algorithm do not do the ad in this specific situation. And now, uh, uh, now let's look at the how users respond heterogeneously. Uh, Specifically, we divide users into new, inactive, and active users. The new users are defined as those who registered after the experiment started. And for the remaining existing users, we further divide them into inactive and active users and using the one month uh, data before the experiment. And the inactive users are just those who never watched any videos four weeks before the experiment and active users vice versa. If we look at the user population percentage and the viewing time contribution during the experiment, we will see that for new users, they are about 5% of the population and contribute to 3% of viewing time. 
And for inactive users, although they are 91% of the population, they only contribute 42% of the bill impact. And in contrast, for the, for the active users, who are only 3.5% of the population, actually, they contribute to the most of the bill impact, which is around uh, 50, 55% of the bill impact. And we further find that it is these active users who will respond positively to a more diversified L result. Yes. This is the same definition as the five and six the bills as before, or is it separate? Uh, it's the same. Yes, still using that five and six. The, the UTC, you can also think of them saying three and the result of the UTC. Oh, sorry. So the inactive users move by 30, and the active users will come to the patient is 30. Uh, so it's not, even though everyone is on 30 after, it's not the same treatment, but it's not the same. Oh, that's a good question. Let me first clarify. Uh, actually, the inactive users saw five before, uh, oh, sorry, so uh, for 15 before and 30 after. Active users saw five uh, and after 30. And I I I'll, I'll admit that uh, this difference change could be different across groups. Uh, but uh, for our results, uh, for the even for a lower uh, recommendation diversity increase for inactive users, they already find a very negative effects on their consumption levels. So if this recommendation diversity further increase, then they will respond even more negatively. So it's a kind of our result is kind of more conservative conservative consideration of that. And let me, ex uh, let, uh, how, how about this? Uh, let me explain how this effect work on every users and elaborate more clearly. So we find that when recommendation diversity increases, actually new users do not respond uh, either their consumption diversity or consumption and engagement levels. For the inactive users, just as said before, so they respond negatively by reducing the clicking frequency without changing the consumption diversity level. So uh, to respond to that question, uh, for even larger recommendation increase, then this, this effect will be even more negative. Uh, clarification, when you say reduce clicking frequency, are you comparing inactive treated users to all control users, or are you comparing inactive treated users to inactive control users? Thank you very much. I compare to the second case, inactive to inactive. And only for this uh, active users, uh, a higher recommendation diversity uh, significantly increase their consumption diversity without hurting users' consumption and engagement levels. Uh, yeah, I see a hand. Yeah, I think that's a similar question that Abner just asked. So, uh, yes, it is different uh, because we are mainly focused on comparing the original algorithm and the new algorithm. Uh, and for the inactive users, we claim that even if the control are different, uh, our even if the window size are different, uh, our results are still uh, whole. And for the active users, you may say that, oh, maybe that's because we increase the window size from five to 30, that's too large. Therefore, that's the reason why they consume more diversely. But I will show you later that we do a follow-up experiment and increase the window size from only five to 15. And we also see the positive effects. And interestingly, users even consume more in all the besides consume more diversely. And so let me qu quickly explain that why these active users will respond positively. Uh, for the interest of time, I will skip the detailed analysis and only explain the high level intuition. The first exact uh, mechanism is about consumer valuation of cloud village. Suppose users have high valuation, then they will trust recommendations more and then be more tolerant to the more diversified recommendations. 
therefore they can respond more act, uh, more positively. And the second perspective is from the algorithm's prediction accuracy of users' preferences. Since active users view more videos, they will leave more behavioral data on this platform. And therefore, the algorithm can better understand their preferences and be more likely to successfully recommend some other new video topics they will also like to watch. And in that case, they can also respond positively. Yes. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I agree to find that they will show more diversified uh, video than the inactive and new user. Uh, but but uh, I can definitely check that if this video, if they are, uh, if their consumption diversity increases from the new to video, uh, from the, their previous video. Thank you for this question. Uh, yes. So in terms of the inputs to the audience, it seems like this platform has not only the data from its video channel, but also data from a lot of other sources. Yes. Are those being used in this algorithm? Oh, actually, it's used in the cold star part. It's an index retrieval stage. They will also consider that their behaviors on the other tabs so that they can predict better about the previous traffic. Say you really like the music about Rihanna, then maybe you are more likely to watch a DJ concert video in this is there a difference in terms of those other inputs you choose to use? So between the inactive users and active users, is there any selection bias in terms of the other inputs from other sources that contribute to the inputs? Uh, but for this case, it's like the deep meaning that the why they respond differently. That's a good question. We can definitely check on that. And that uh, maybe I think that's part of the reason why the active user can have a higher prediction accuracy. Well, yeah, maybe you can finish by 1045 and then we'll start asking you questions. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. But I'm also very happy to chat more after this uh, part. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, to uh, quickly uh, test these mechanisms, uh, we segment active users into four parts uh, and using the measure with uh, how do we measure this consumer valuation actually we use the total viewing time four weeks before the experiment to measure its users uh, evaluation uh, the more time they will then they will value the type of work and also and now we use kind of a high level uh, measure to measure that prediction accuracy which is that the total number of clicks a user has made four weeks before the experiment. Uh, and doing that, um, we further use the 80-20 rule to divide users. Uh, and for the high valuation, high accuracy users, uh, actually they have more than 11 clicks and more than 10 minutes of billing time uh, one month before the experiment. After we rerun all analysis for all users, we find that only this high valuation, high accuracy users respond positively. However, for the low valuation, high accuracy users, they marginally consume more diversely, but they also visit less and engage less. And for the remaining low accuracy users, they do not change their consumption diversity, but also click less, billing less, and engage less. Therefore, we can see that the high accuracy is a key for this platform to encourage users to consume more diversely, but that's not enough. So in order to for the users to maintain their consumption or engagement levels, they also need to make sure this user have a high enough valuation of this platform's content. Therefore, we conclude that both the user's high valuation and the algorithm's high prediction accuracy are necessary for the platform to ensure users can have a positive responses from a more diversified algorithm. 
And actually, we want this all the staff, and we talk to the company and suggest them to increase the window size for active users, uh, just as I mentioned before, from 5 to 15. And they really saw some positive results about this follow up experiment and find that active users consume not only more diversely, but also can click more videos and view a longer time. And facing this positive results, uh, they updated this algorithm and now recommend more diversified videos to millions of active users. We are really excited about this part because I think it's my first time to do a research and really have an impact on the company's decisions and their millions of users. And uh, last, let me quickly wrap up the paper. We find that a more diversified recommender system course average users' consumption level and does not have a strong positive effect on users' consumption diversity. But the good news is that active users can respond positively by consume more diversely without hurting their consumption or engagement levels. Our mechanism ana analysis shows that active users respond positively could be due to both their high valuation of the platform's content and their algorithm well understand these active users' preferences. And last, we suggest social media platforms such as this called Village and target on active users to expand users' consumption diversity. In that case, users can not only have a chance to mitigate the filter bubble problem, and the platform will not be hurt by reducing their performance metrics, and thus we can lead to a win-win situation. That's all my presentation. Thanks for <laughs> Okay, um, great. Uh, my title screen is way less fun than Ron's. I feel insecure about that. Um, thank you so much uh, to the organizers for asking me to discuss this paper. Uh, really enjoyed reading it. Um, I've tried to take the five minute limit for discussions uh, to heart. So I will sort of skip uh, summarizing the paper since you all saw um, a pretty clear talk about it and kind of just get right into the um, actual discussion of the paper. Uh, all right, so um, first, uh, I think this paper has a, a lot of strengths, a lot of uh, admirable qualities, uh, one of which is that I think it's a, it's a really nice, uh, clean experiment. Uh, so the, the randomization checks are all, you know, um, what you'd expect them to be, I guess. And um, I think the manipulation is clean and importantly easy to understand. So um, having done some research on uh, personalization algorithms and trying to run field experiments, uh, these algorithms are, are really complicated. And so uh, actually changing how they work can be difficult to explain in a paper or difficult to explain to an audience. So I, I think this manipulation um, that the authors do in the paper to sort of increase the window size in this final step of the algorithm you know, sort of clearly affects the diversity of what's being consumed, but in a way that's pretty easy to communicate and understand. Um, and, and I think one thing that's really nice about this paper is that, um, you know, my suspicion, and I've, I've emailed with Gunging about this a little bit, but it seems like the authors have access to really rich data from the firm. So you can imagine doing a lot of uh, interesting follow-ups or sort of digging deeper into the experimental data to, to really understand what's going on and um, get at the mechanisms. Uh, I think this paper also sort of connects to and builds on this growing research literature that looks at personalization and uh, diversity. There's a few papers, um, I've listed a few, including, uh, I guess, the paper that I had on the job market a couple of years ago, Gong Ying gave a longer list in her talk. And I, I think what's nice about this paper relative to a lot of these other papers is some of them do look at diversity, but sort of always look at an intervention that did not directly manipulate the diversity of what's being recommended. Whereas I think 
this experiment is really tackling the diversity question head on and sort of asking what happens if we actually change the diversity of the content that's recommended. Um, I think one thing that's also true about this literature is that there's a lot of different algorithms. There's also a lot of different types of settings in which these algorithms are deployed. And so uh, like the entire endeavor of trying to understand the impact of diversity or personalization or something is, is pretty difficult. So you can imagine there's just value in accumulating more data as a field on the impact that different types of algorithms have in different types of settings. Um, and then finally, I, I think just I want to reiterate that the paper really lays down, I think, a strong foundation and is a really good first step in uh, you know, starting to dig in deeper and investigate some of the mechanisms that explain the paper's main effects. So um, I want to spend the next few minutes uh, talking about some of these ways that I think the authors could sort of dive deeper um, into some of those mechanisms. And uh, one thing that was reassuring for me is that a lot of the things that I have in these slides are very similar to things that were coming out of the audience during the talk. So it um, seems like they're um, pretty good ideas. Um, so one thing that I think can be done is to increase the sort of power and the richness of the main results. And I, I think there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, one is to just add in some of the data that the authors have um, to either increase power or uh, look at some heterogeneous stream effects. So uh, for instance, I think they have uh, gender and other demographic attributes, things like that. And so insofar as some of the uh, results are you know, marginally significant or, or maybe not as strong as we would like, uh, there's probably some statistical power that's being left on the table. Um, but you can also imagine doing sort of a, uh, like a late style um, analysis of the experiment. So we have this direct manipulation, which is changing the window size that's applied. Uh, in some cases, that's going to lead to uh, really large changes in the diversity of the content that's recommended in cases where there's a lot of diverse content in that larger window. But in some other cases, that's actually not going to change the diversity of what's re recommended very much at all, because maybe everything in the queue all the way to the maximum window size pushed many times over is all in the same category. So I think the authors can actually exploit that variation, sort of treat their actual manipulation as an instrument, basically, that is an intent to treat. In some cases, the diversity is going to change a lot. In other cases, it's not going to change uh, very much. Um, I think this also might help explain some of the heterogeneous treatment effects of the paper. Uh, I think Abner had asked about the treatment being a little bit different for the two different types of uh, users, active and inactive. And insofar as that's true, I, I think this will sort of show up in sort of the strength of this, uh, you know, instrument of sorts uh, for these different groups. Um, I also think that under like sort of digging into what's going on with the algorithm, I, I think there's an opportunity to look at the heterogeneity of the treatment effects with respect to some of the uh, lower level user observables that correspond to what's actually happening in this algorithm. So for instance, you could ask um, where in the embedding space is a given user located? So uh, going sort of abstracted away from this in the talk, but that very first stage of the algorithm, the way it works is it's embedding users into a, a low dimensional embedding space. And so you might ask, maybe some users are in areas of that embedding space where there's tons of content that's nearby. And then maybe some other users are in uh, regions of that embedding space that are relatively sparse in terms of video content that's available to be recommended. Um, you can also ask, you know, how does the treatment effect vary as a function of how close these things that are uh, pulled are to that user? So in some cases that max score might on average be really high. So the matches are really good. In other cases, the match score on average might be quite poor, in which case the uh, treatment effects might be different. Um, and you can also imagine looking at heterogeneity with respect to the change in the match score due to the treatment. So this treatment is sort of designed as something that changes diversity. It is doing that. But it's also, as someone mentioned, uh, changing the average match score of the pieces of content that are actually recommended to the user. And so we might want to understand how much of the treatment effects that we see are coming from changes in diversity as opposed to changes in the match score. Um, and then finally, one thing that I think could be uh, kind of fun, and uh, we've emailed a bit about this, and this might be a, a different paper, but I just kind of wanted to briefly mention it, is, um, you know, reading the paper, I did find myself thinking, you know, insofar as there are some benefits to increasing the, diver the diversity of the content that's recommended, uh, could the firm do even better by using machine learning to try to predict which users have a taste for more diversity, and then uh, sort of customizing the extent to which the window size is increased as a function of that predicted taste for diversity. Um, there's actually a paper uh, by some research scientists at Spotify uh, that do something similar to this. So they sort of um, look at people who uh, maybe have a preference to listen to Beyonce lookalikes or I guess soundalikes um, rather than the real Beyonce. And so they inject those users into those, uh, or those songs into those users' cues 
when they have the opportunity to do so. And so you can imagine doing something similar, uh, maybe trained on the data from this experiment to really have an optimized approach to diversity um, across the cloud village. Um, one last thing that I just wanted to briefly mention is um, there's some interesting stuff in the appendix to this paper that uh, didn't really make it into, uh, into the talk. So, uh, you know, the appendix has uh, a few figures like this that actually look at the time varying effects of uh, changes in the recommendation diversity on different uh, user outcomes that are discussed in the paper. And I think that this is actually really interesting and maybe uh, worth digging into more. Um, and I think uh, there's a couple of different reasons why this is interesting. So uh, one reason is that there might be some ability here to learn something about algorithmic feedback and uh, sort of path dependence. So if I'm recommended something more diverse in time one, how does that affect my consumption in time two, which then affects my consumption in time three, so on and so forth. So it might be just interesting to understand the heterogeneity and the effects of the treatment over time. Um, but I think this could also be helpful in just addressing some comments about the algorithm being suboptimal. So I, I think a couple of folks in the audience asked, you know, insofar as you're increasing diversity, aren't you also just making the recommendations worse? And um, in my experience, I'm actually not 100% sure this is happening in this particular experiment, but these algorithms are trained sort of myopically on increasing clicks or consumption in the session where a particular piece of content is shown. But we don't know that that's actually optimal in the long term. So um, actually this uh, Anderson uh, co-author's paper that Kony cited uh, finds that when um, recommendations on Spotify are less diverse, uh, people are more likely to churn, probably because they sort of get sick of being shown the same things over and over. And so even if in the short term, you know, the likelihood of clicking is lower, it might be the case that if we look at these longer term results and actually look at the heterogeneity over time, we find that there's some benefit over longer time horizons. Um, I, I know it was mentioned that the experiment only ran for a short period of time, and this follow-up experiment was launched shortly thereafter. So the ability to really do a, like a full-blown version of this is maybe slightly limited, but nonetheless, there might be something interesting to learn here um, and the results that the authors do have. Um, so that's what I have. Once again, a really, uh, really great paper. Enjoy reading it. So thank you for the chance. And <laughs> Thank you, Sposa. Thank you so, thank so much for David for giving such a great talent. And also, I you know, appreciate that David even clarifying more about our contribution and even digging into our appendix to find more interesting results. I really appreciate that. And I only want to quickly respond for one point, especially about the second part uh, for this uh, embedding and the batch score part. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the data about the embeddings because typically the company will not save that embeddings uh, to save space. Uh, but uh, the lucky thing is that when we checked with the company, we found that they do have this mesh score for all recommended, recommended videos. So in that case, we can do use that average mesh score to indicate kind of the prediction accuracy of the algorithm for each user. And furthermore, it's like if we really want to know the prediction, objective prediction of accuracy of algorithm, instead of how well they think they can be, then we can also compare this match score with the, with the realized uh, clicking behaviors of users and calculate either the AOC or precision or recall stuff and to further dig into that underlying mechanisms. And for the other uh, recommendations, I think that's really inspiring. I can even extend our two new papers. Yeah. I I call. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, 12 minutes and set our leg, then we'll start um, with, with Junior again at 11.10 sharp. 10 up. Yeah. 10 up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, <laughs> 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 